When I bought these unbranded sound cards online, I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but it turns out these are one of the best DOS compatible PCI sound cards. Let's have a look what's inside. We can see the sound card and there's also a driver disk. The card is very minimalistic. We've got an oscillator, the chip, a few capacitors. So really it did not fill me with much confidence. The chip on the card is from ESS Allegro 1 and a model number of ES1988S. So let's find out what this sound card can do. We need a Windows 98 retro gaming PC. We've got a socket 754 system with an Athlon 64 3400 plus and 256 megabytes of RAM. Slow is good, especially for MS-DOS games. So I went into the BIOS. I reduced the speed of the RAM to 100 megahertz and I also changed the CPU multiplier to 5X. So it's running at one gigahertz. For storage, I'm using a SanDisk Extreme Pro with 32 gigabytes. And next up, I'm installing Windows 98 and then the chipset drivers. And right away, I ran into an issue. So first up, I installed the sound card into the top PCI slot. And as soon as I tried to install the drivers, the machine would lock up. And you can go into the BIOS and have a look under the plug and play section where the resources are allocated. And we can see that this slot, the resources are shared with the USB interface and I need the USB to use the mouse and the keyboard. So I use the second slot and this does not share the resources. Unfortunately, it assigns interrupt 10 to the sound card, especially in MS-DOS, this is an issue. For example, if you run Prince of Persia, you get the ad lib sound effects, not the sound blaster. And there's an easy fix. Again, you go into the BIOS where the resources are and you manually force interrupt seven or five for this PCI slot. So I'm choosing Interrupt 7. It's slightly more compatible with old DOS games and you can see on the BIOS post screen that Interrupt 7 is being allocated to the sound card. So now everything is working. Time to install the sound drivers. Just run the setup program and it installs the drivers for the sound card as well as the joystick and the DOS emulation. I'm running the DirectX diagnostic tool and we can see we have a VXD driver version 4.12.00.713. Under Windows 98, this sound card is nothing amazing. We're not getting any EAX or A3D, but we're getting basic Windows sound. So you can play older games such as GL Quake perfectly fine. And now I wanted to check out DOS compatibility. So I'm opening a MS-DOS prompt and I'm running set to see the environment uh, variables. And we can see here the blaster variable is already set. So that looks very promising. Let's try out Doom. And that's awesome, we're getting working FM music as well as Sound Blaster sound effects. But what about MS-DOS mode? So the driver, after I install the Windows driver, it puts a few DOS-related files into the root directory of the hard drive. We have ESSAudio.sys, we've got ESSAudio.com and ESSAudio.ini. You need to edit your config.sys and load the ESSAudio.sys driver. And then we need to load ESSAudio.com. You can do that either in the autoexec batch file or in the DOS start batch file. And also add the set blaster command to set the environment variable with address 220, DMA1, interrupt 7 and T4, which means it's a new version of the Sound Blaster Pro. And here we can see what happens when you boot into the MS-DOS mode. At the top we can see ESSAudio.sys being successfully loaded in the config.sys and at the bottom we can see ESSAudio.com also successfully loaded. The resources match what we saw in Windows, address 220, interrupt 7 and DMA1. The driver uses transparent direct memory access. That's a technique used which basically means you can use PCI cards like an ISA card. And in MS-DOS mode, the compatibility was excellent. I tried Lemmings, we have Prince of Persia, Doom, The Heart of China, Space Quest 1, the VGA version, Raptor, Stunts, 
Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, Wolfenstein 3D, Epic Pinball and Gods. Basically, all the games I tried worked without any issues. Unfortunately, we have a few issues. For example, the game port and also the MPU 401 MIDI interface do not work. So yeah, you can't use a joystick and you can't connect a sound canvas or other MIDI device. So that is a bit of a shame. What about CD audio? There are a few headers, but there are no pins soldered and who knows if they are actually connected. However, the card does have a line in. Uh, unfortunately, it's mislabeled. It's not the orange one. It is the blue one, of course. So what you do is you get an aux cable and you connect the headphone output of your CD-ROM drive to the blue line in on the sound card. And next up, I fired a game. We've got Screamer Rally. And let's see if the CD audio works. So there you go. We now also have CD digital audio. Now you might be wondering about the FM music quality. So let's listen to Lemmings for a little bit. So yeah guys, it's not the best FM implementation, but it's also not the worst. I also couldn't get the DOS mixer to function, but what really stands out with this card is it's cheap, it was under $10 and excellent DOS compatibility. So pretty much most games should work on this sound card. If you want to check out more PCI sound cards for MS-DOS, I have two videos for you. One about the ESS Solo One and the other one about the Yamaha YMF. Thanks for watching and I shall see you soon in another one.